Hello, welcome to Movie Summaries. Today we are summarizing a 2019 supernatural horror movie called Polaroid. Fair warning, there are spoilers in this summary. Enjoy, and be sure to subscribe to watch more videos weekly, and hit like. The movie begins with two young girls, Sarah and Linda, looking through an old box. They find an old Polaroid camera belonging to Sarah's mother, who recently died. The girls decide to take a picture with the camera for Sarah's boyfriend. When Linda snaps the picture, a shadow figure can be seen standing behind Sarah. Linda leaves, and Sarah goes to the front to close her front door. From upstairs, the Polaroid camera can be heard winding up, as if someone is trying to take a picture with it. Sarah goes back upstairs to check. As Sarah is looking at the photo, she notices the shadow figure behind her and becomes anxious. But the lights go out, and strange noises can be heard in the hallway. Sarah goes to investigate. As she is going to walk downstairs, a ball bounces down from the attic. Sarah is clearly frightened as she climbs the attic ladder. Honestly, why would she even go up there? Once she has entered the attic, the ladder falls to the ground, giving her no safe way back down. She scans the attic for signs of someone and hears a raspy, winding breath from the darkness. Suddenly, an inhuman hand appears from around the corner. Sarah falls down the attic opening. Sarah is snatched back up, screaming before her body is dropped back down. That's one hell of an opening for this movie. We presumably go through a time jump to a high school picture day where we meet Bird. Students laugh in the background, calling her Scarf Girl. Bird gathers her stuff into her bike carrier and sees Connor across the street talking to his friends. She grabs her camera from her bag and takes a picture of him, but he sees her before she can put it away. Clearly, our little birdie has a crush. She quickly gathers her things and heads off to her job at the antique shop. She sits, working on an old pocket watch containing the picture of her and her father. Her friend and co-worker, Tyler, enters the shop with a box of new antiques he got. Knowing how much Bird likes photography, he pulls out the old Polaroid as a gift. Bird gets excited to have such a timeless camera. She takes a picture of Tyler to test it out, and a familiar shadow figure lurks in the background. As the two wait for the picture to develop, Tyler tries to kiss Bird. She pulls back and awkwardly rushes out of the store to get away from the situation. Poor guy, that's gotta hurt. Bird rides her bike back home and spots a father and daughter playing on the sidewalk. She pulls out her camera, but can't bring herself to take the picture. Inside, she finds her mother preparing to go to work for an extra shift. Back in her room, Bird inspects her new camera and finds the initials RJS etched into it. She decides to take a picture of her dog, but he's not too happy about it. He growls and backs away slowly trying to get out of view. Dog's got the right idea. Suddenly, Bird's best friend Casey appears and spooks Bird before she can snap the picture. At least the dog is safe. Casey tries to convince Bird to come to a party with her, but Bird is hesitant. Casey tells her that Connor will be there and that it would be a good chance for people at school to get to know her. She hands Bird a red riding hood cape as it is a costume party and informs her that their ride will be there in 20 minutes. Bird reluctantly agrees to go and climbs in the car with two other friends, Devin and Mina, a couple with a bit of a playful, love-hate relationship. Bird pulls out the picture of Tyler she took earlier and notices a dark shadow behind them. She tries to wipe it off, thinking it may be a smudge, but it doesn't go away. She thinks nothing more of it and puts the photo away. She checks her scarf to make sure it is covering the scars on her neck before the group drives away. Back at the antique store, Tyler is getting ready to lock up when he notices a bunch of old picture slides in the box he got. He sets up an old school slide projector and begins looking through the photos. Family pictures scroll past as Tyler presses the slide buttons. When a shadow appears in one of the photos, Tyler scrolls past and back again, only to find the shadow was moved to a different picture. Thinking someone could be standing behind a projector curtain, he grabs a hammer and swings at the shadow. When he doesn't hit anything, he laughs it off and turns to put the projector back up. While his back is turned, the sheet rises with the shape of a person beneath it. Tyler turns, frightened, as the sheet rushes at him. Bird and her friends finally arrive at the party, where everyone is dressed in masks and costumes. Bird already seems uncomfortable. Mina leads them into the kitchen to greet Avery, the host of the party. Avery is dressed as a sexy fortune teller and hands each of them a tarot card. The lovers for Mina and Devon, the fool for Casey. When she gets to Bird, she tells her to pick one. Bird reaches for the deck and draws a card. Death because why wouldn't it be that one? The next scene shows Bird hanging out alone in a corner. Across the room, she sees a guy in a skeleton mask staring at her, creeped out. She heads upstairs to get away, only to run right into him when he follows her. The guy takes off his mask to reveal 
It is only Connor. What a relief. He asks Bird if her picture turned out okay. Bird lies and tells him she was just doing a camera test. Nice try, but he knows you took a picture. They introduce themselves to each other, with Connor complimenting Bird on her unique name. He notices the Polaroid in her bag and asks about it. She takes the camera out to show him, and the two have a little bonding moment. How sweet. He's actually really nice. Mina and Devin show up and drunkenly interrupt their conversation. They pull Connor to take a picture with him, and Bird offers to use her Polaroid. Casey photobombs at the last second, just as Bird snaps the photo. Once again, the dark shadow appears, standing behind Connor. Avery shows up and is offended they took a picture without her. She snatches Bird's camera and takes a selfie with him. She scoffs when the photo comes out blank at first. Bird tries to explain that it takes a few minutes to develop. Someone from downstairs shouts about the cops arriving. Avery shifts the camera back to Bird and goes to see what's happening. They call Bird down, saying the police officers are looking for her. Bird is escorted to the police station, where she is questioned about Tyler. Sheriff Pembroke gives Bird the devastating news about Tyler's death and asks her to contact him if she thinks of anything. He recognizes her last name and tells her he was at the scene the night of her accident. He tells her that she was a brave girl before sending her home. That would explain the next scars. Back at home, Bird is looking at her picture of Tyler when she notices the shadow smudge from earlier has disappeared. She looks at the other pictures and notices that it has appeared in Avery's photo. She picks up her phone to call Avery, but decides not to. Back at Avery's house, she is ushering the last of the party goers out and begins to clean up. She heads down to the basement to throw away some trash. Upstairs, loud thudding footsteps can be heard walking around. She goes back upstairs and looks around cautiously. A raspy, winding breath can be heard in the darkness, and she turns to see a figure standing behind her. She runs toward the front door, but hits her head on a lamp, causing her to fall. That's going to give her one hell of a headache. She tries to crawl her way to the front door, but the monster catches up to her and snaps her neck. The next morning, Casey calls Bird to tell her about Avery's death. She says that Avery fell down her basement stairs and broke her neck. Shaken by the news, Bird quickly goes to check the photos and finds the shadow missing from Avery's photo. The shadow has moved back to the group picture of Bird's friends. Angry, Bird throws the camera at the wall, but it emits a shockwave that knocks her over. At school, Bird sits with Mina, Devin, Casey, and Connor at a lunch table as they all soak in the recent deaths of two of their classmates. Bird offers a theory that Avery didn't fall, but that something happened to her. She shows her friends the pictures and explains how she noticed the shadow moving from photo to photo after each death. She tells them she thinks they may all be in danger, because if the camera takes your picture, you die, as expected. The others don't believe what she is implying, particularly Devon berates Bird for her claims. He takes the group picture and lights it on fire from one of the corners, despite Bird and Connor telling him not to. As the picture burns, the group notices smoke starting to appear around Mina. Suddenly, Mina begins to feel immense pain in her arm, eventually spontaneously catching fire. Connor sprays her with the fire extinguisher as she screams in agony, but it does no good. As the fire consumes the picture, Casey begins to smoke as well. Bird makes the connection and puts the fire out on the picture, which seems to do the trick. They all watch in horror as the picture reforms undamaged where it was previously charred. The group takes Mina to the hospital, contemplating what happened as they wait for news on her condition. Bird, Connor, and Casey discuss where the camera came from. Bird remembers that the camera case is back at the antique store, so she and Connor go to retrieve it. Bird opts to go in alone, since she is safe from not being in the picture. She sneaks into the store, as it is still an active crime scene, and looks around for the case. Outside, Connor examines the group photo when the camera begins winding up. Bird eventually finds the case on a top shelf, but is confronted by the creature. She rushes to get out, but her scarf gets caught on a nail, choking her. Connor saves her and gets her out just in time. Puzzled as to why the creature came after her, Connor reveals that Bird is in fact in the picture. He shows her the photo, where she can faintly be seen through a reflection in the window. Back at the hospital, Mina finally wakes up after surgery to find Devin sitting by her bed. He goes to get a nurse, leaving Mina alone. Bird calls Mina to inform them that something attacked her, and they could be next. Devin, who is still looking for a nurse, notices a door open and goes to check. Mina gets up to call for help. A nurse finally shows up and tells Devin she will check on Mina in a minute. He goes back to her room to find it empty, with a little blood trail on the floor. He follows the trail and finds Mina hanging. Bird and Connor arrive back at the hospital to Devin with the police. Devin blames Bird for Mina's death and sends her off crying. Connor follows after her to comfort her. They sit in a hallway together, and Bird tells him about the night her father died. 
She tells him that he was a reporter who worked for the town's newspaper and was driving her to a sleepover one night when she was 12. He took her to a spot to show her something he was working on, but she told him she didn't care, and so he turned the car around. She says they got hit by another car, and he died. Connor tells her that if her dad were there, he would tell her that none of it was her fault. Bird responds by saying if he were there, he would be trying to figure out the why. The two of them dump out the contents of the camera case and find an evidence locker tag hidden inside. They go to the library to look through archives around the time of the tag. They search through old newspapers and find articles of a serial killer. Back in October of 1974, Roland Joseph Sable was a photography teacher at their high school who murdered three students. The camera belonged to him and was used to take pictures of his victims before he murdered them. Roland was shot and killed before he could be taken into custody. Bird, Connor, Casey, and Devin all go to a restaurant to try and figure out what to do. Bird reveals that when the entity came after her, it reacted negatively when it got near something hot. She speculates that it may behave like a developing photograph, meaning it can only exist in the dark. Casey shares information about haunted photos and cursed objects she found online. She says that ghosts who are bound by an object always have unfinished business. Bird shows them a picture of his old house and suggests that someone related to him may still live there and know something. Casey looks it up, but says the house was bought by an Ann Faraday in 1977. Devin gets impatient and grabs the camera, claiming to want to figure out how it works, and aims it at Bird. Connor gets up to stop him, and the two struggle for the camera, which ends in a picture being taken of Devin. The shadow moves from the group photo to the picture of Devin, and the group realizes that each photo changes the order of who dies next. Devin grabs the camera again, claiming he won't be next, and points it at Bird. Just as he is about to take the picture, Casey stabs a pencil through his hand in the photo, causing him to drop the camera. He grunts in pain as a hole appears in his actual hand as well. He tries to attack Casey, but Connor holds him back. A police officer breaks the two of them up, but Devin slaps the officer across the face, landing himself in jail. Honestly, he deserves it for acting that way. Connor and Bird tried to talk Sheriff Pembroke into letting Devin out, but he refuses. They try to explain to him what is happening with the pictures and the camera, but he brushes them off and warns them to stop messing around with him. Bird talks to Devin before they leave, and he apologizes. He tells them that his being next may buy them time to stop it. Casey calls Bird and informs her that she found the Ann Faraday, who bought Roland's house is actually his wife, Lena Sable, using a fake name. Bird and Connor head to visit Lena and find out what she knows. Back in the police station, the entity finally comes for Devin. He tries to hide, but is killed in his cell. Lena takes Bird and Connor into her house. She reveals that the camera didn't belong to her husband. Bird says that it must have, because it has his initials on it. But Lena tells her that it was their daughter, Rebecca J's camera, and leads them to a bedroom. She reveals that Rebecca died, the part of the story no one ever talks about, she says. She tells them that Rebecca was always in her own world, and that she got attached to the camera after she got it as a gift. She took it everywhere with her, and the kids at school bullied her for it. She says that one night, four kids tricked Rebecca into going out with them, and took explicit photos of her with the camera, and passed the pictures out at school. Rebecca was so embarrassed that she killed herself. Lena says Roland was enraged after seeing the pictures and what happened. So, he went after the four kids seeking revenge. He killed them in the dark room of the school and died holding the camera. But one of the four got away. The lights in the room flicker, causing Connor to check the photos. He sees that the entity has moved back to the group picture and tells Bird that they need to leave. Bird calls Casey and tells her to meet them at the school because she has an idea of how to fix the situation. They head to the school and check the archive drawers for old yearbooks. Bird and Connor search through the 1974 one and match the picture of the survivor Lena gave them to a yearbook photo. Sheriff Pembroke was the survivor. Speaking of him, Sheriff Pembroke appears with a handcuff Casey, accusing them of breaking and entering. To be fair, they are. He escorts them towards the exit. Connor accuses him of following them because he was afraid they would find out the truth. Sheriff Pembroke scoffs, asking if Lena told them that he bullied her daughter until she killed herself. Bird pulls out the camera, but can't bring herself to take the picture. Connor takes the camera from her. Pembroke becomes agitated and smacks the camera out of his hands, but not before Connor snaps a picture. Pembroke reveals that Lena lied to them. He says that Rebecca's father was the one who took the photos of her, and that his friends and he were trying to get Rebecca away from Roland. They were going to take the pictures to the police, but when Roland found out, he snapped and came after them to protect his secret. Rebecca hung herself because she couldn't live with the guilt of her friend's death. The entity appears and grabs Pembroke's photo from the ground. He rips the picture in half, ripping Pembroke's body in half with it. The three friends try to run away, 
but Casey injures her leg. Connor grabs Pembroke's gun and shoots the entity to distract him while the two girls run. The girls hide in a locker room and Bird turns the hot water on all the showers to protect them. She leaves Casey there to go find Connor while she is looking for him. Connor pulls her into a room and shows her that the shadow is still in their picture. Bird finally figures out how to stop him and the two go to find the camera before they can get it. The entity grabs Connor and drags him away. Bird takes the camera and snaps a picture of herself to save him. The entity shifts its focus to her and she runs down to the school darkroom. The entity follows her and grabs her by the throat. Bird lifts the camera to its face and takes a picture of the entity, with two of her fingers also appearing in the photo. She crumples the picture in her hand, causing the entity to contort and crumble with it, as well as breaking her own two fingers. Ouch. When that doesn't kill her, she sets the picture on fire, killing the entity once and for all. She meets back up with Connor and Casey, and the three share relief in the fact that they are safe. Bird takes the camera and throws it into the ocean, where it can never hurt anyone ever again. What an ending, right? Freaking bird saving the day. Hope you enjoyed our summary. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos weekly. Thanks.